division like the NFC East. Think about it. Championships, traditions, fan bases that are just so rabid. You can't rebuild in this division. So anytime any of these four teams intersect, you should get a pretty darn good football game. And I think that's what we have in store tonight. Both teams were very solid and impressive in week one. But they also know that they haven't faced the best competition yet. They're chomping at the bit to get on the other side of the line of scrimmage and eye up somebody who they think is pretty darn good. Ron Jaworski played in a couple of these NFC East matchups. Tony Kornheiser has covered plenty of them. And you know, Tony, we were here two years ago for a Giants-Cowboys matchup. The night Tony Romo was uh, taking over the Dallas quarterback spot. It's been a pretty good run since, except for one opponent in the stadium. Well, that was like a star is born. He's only played a season and a half. He's made the Pro Bowl twice. Last year, he had 36 touchdown passes. That's a lot of touchdown passes. But if there is an Achilles heel, it's in this building against this team. The Philadelphia Eagles have beaten him both times in this building, and two of his three worst statistical performances have come against the Eagles. You're an Eagle. What's up with that? Why does that happen? It's real simple. Jim Johnson, the Eagles' defensive coordinator, likes to blitz Tony Romo. He likes to get him playing fast, break down his timing, and get him out of his rhythm. Back to that 10 to 6 Eagles victory a year ago here in Dallas, they blitzed one out of every three snaps, and they were effective with their blitz scheme. But there is risk to reward to those blitzes. If Tony gets the ball out quick, could be a big play. Philly defensive headline tonight, get pressure on Romo. Now the Dallas defensive headline. You know, as we prepare for the games, you look at stats and matchups, talk to players. Every time we mention the name Brian Westbrook, Philadelphia, Marshall Falk's name keeps coming up, and that's Hall of Fame type caliber. And, and Brian Westbrook is having that kind of career. You know, he really is the bell cow for the Philadelphia Eagles offensive season. They'll wait to see Tony Romo on the offense. Dallas has won the toss. Wade Phillips, a fan of the option to defer. He does, so Philadelphia will get the ball first. <laughs> and Nick Folk is set to kick. It is 50-50 at the coin toss. That's exactly right. <laughs> Off we go from Dallas, and Folk's kick does go out of bounds, and we'll give Philadelphia the ball at the 40 to start the game here tonight. Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball we placed on the 40-yard line. First down. It's the voice of Terry McCauley, our referee tonight. Here comes Donovan McNabb. I, I think Steve Young made a good point on Monday Night Countdown. You feel like Donovan's older than his 31. I mean, we saw so much of his college career at Syracuse where he started for four years. It's his 10th year here in the NFL. But uh, as we visited with Donovan last night, he's feeling so much more confident in the team around him his place on this team and that knee that he heard a couple of seasons ago. He's healthy, Mike. That's the bottom line. He enters this season 100% healthy. And last week, he was really stroking against the St. Louis Rams. Draws exactly what you told us right at the start. Look for Brian Westbrook. He's the receiver on the near side to start the game tonight. And his first throw is off the hands of L.J. Smith and incomplete. Here's the thing. I mean, you mentioned he's perfectly healthy. He has not been healthy over the last three or four years. He's missed games in each of the last three years. We asked Andy Reid, how do you know Donovan is healthy? How do you know he's the right guy? And this is a direct quote. With Donovan, it's when that smile comes back on his face, then you don't worry about anything. When did you see it, Andy? With three games to go at the end of last season. So if he's smiling tonight, Andy Reid's happy. Second and ten inside, handoff with Westbrook. First down, gain of about 14 as Westbrook takes it to the 46-yard line. Led the National Football League in yards from scrimmage last year. You add him up to 2,104. If you want to know what puts a smile on Donovan McNabb's face, it's when that guy gains 14 every time you hand him the ball. Westbrook. Yeah. What an option on second and ten when you can hand the football off and gain 14 yards and yeah. bring about a first down. A lot of pressure off the quarterback when you can do that. Uh, first down and run. There's only going to be a couple of yards for Westbrook. And here's Donovan. Kevin Curtis, sports hernia. He'll be out for a while. Reggie Brown was close tonight, but not going to make it. They hope to have him next week against Pittsburgh. The cab screening to the busy Westbrook. Quite a read. Ball popped out after the Zach Thomas hit. A throw down. Only a gain of a couple. How strange it is to see Zach Thomas not in the Dolphins uniform. 
You'll see Brian Westbrook here. You'll see the fake to him first. Donovan looks downfield. This is a nice job of setting up the screen, but excellent reaction by Zach Thomas to sniff it out. That was a move of a wily old veteran linebacker. Seven consecutive Pro Bowl seasons with the Dolphins. Likely wrapping up his career here with the Cowboys. Defensive backs Dallas. Good time for McNabb. Nobody open until that one. Breaking free is Brent Sellett. The backup tight end to the 23-yard line. A first down gain of 19 before Adam Jones made the tackle. The Philadelphia Eagles have the biggest offensive line in the National Football League, averaging 330 pounds per man. They gave Donovan a lot of time there. Excellent job by Donovan keeping his eyes downfield. Once he broke the pocket, he didn't look to run. Five years ago, Donovan would have been darted in the secondary. Now he's looking for the receiver. He finds Selleck, moved the chains once again for the Eagles. The rookies at the top of the screen, Deshaun Jackson at a cow. McNabb looks that way, goes that way. Second and three, Westbrook waiting for him to mark his way. Pro Bowl in the last two years. Third down. DeMarcus Ware is one of those players that the Eagles must identify when they come out of the huddle. You'll see him there, number 94, unblocked on the play. The Eagles going with their zone blocking scheme up front in the run game. Clearly a mistake right there. You've got to get someone on, on Ware. He's just too good of a football player. How did he get around five guys that weigh 330 <laughs> pounds apiece? I sure hope they're eating hard healthy. He's quick. Third and three, McNabb fires to Jackson. First down, lost the ball. Incomplete. Ruled an incomplete forward pass. Anthony Henry was there on the initial hit on Jackson and the initial ruling incomplete. Fourth down. Donovan, nice job of seeing the corner off and throwing that ball in a perfect location. You can see Deshaun Jackson never had complete control of that football. But once again, excellent read and throw by Donald McNabb. The rookie's got to come up with that catch. So David Akers, three-time pro bowler. As you see, the all-time leader in points for Philadelphia. Didn't miss one inside of 40 last year. At 34. Able to knock through the games first. Good opening drive by the Eagles. Felix Jones, the rookie out of Arkansas, returns the kickoff. Nice patience by Jones, but a marker comes in on the return, likely to erase a 36-yard bring back. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 25. 10 yard penalty, first down. Tony Romo's become one of the premier quarterbacks in the National Football League. Your team, any team, could have had him. He was undrafted, free agent. Bill Parcells liked what he saw, hung around here for a while, see what he's done in his two seasons as a starter. Drive starts from the 14, Marion Barber. We get about a yard and a half to a Mike Patterson. <laughs> The tackle. Tony Romo did come out of nowhere uh, and then stayed on the bench for three or four years and Bill Parcells put him in for Drew Bledsoe at a Monday night game a couple of years ago. This past year he had 36 touchdown passes. He is an enormous star without portfolio really in terms of coming out of college and a very confident young man and you have to be if you're going to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. It's more than just playing football. Third game and one Romo's first pass for Jason Witten incomplete. Quentin Michael, an improving strong safety on the coverage. Third down coming. Yeah, I think what really has separated Tony Rome was the understanding of coverage. He knows how to read coverage and gets the ball out quickly. You know, and you got to remember this. I like the way he was brought along. You know, he played behind Bledsoe, as you just said a moment ago, Tony, mm -hmm. but he learned from a veteran. You know, you see what's happened this past weekend. Guys that started for the first time, played behind a Wiley veteran, they played pretty well.
Eagles six defensive backs. Only rush the front four. And Romo packs and throws to T.O. He heads to the 28. First down in front of Sheldon Brown. Excellent job by Tony Romo. He looked to his right, looked to his right, and then came back to Terrell Owens. Did a nice job of pushing up against Sheldon Brown and working back to the football. The key there was pass protection. The Cowboys offensive line gave Romo time to survey the field to the right first and then come back to T.O. on the left. Owens caught five balls in the win against Cleveland, 28 to 10 in Ohio on the opening Sunday. Marion Barber snuffed out Brian Dawkins. The veteran still going. 34 made the tackle. Romo looked that way twice, shovels it out to Barber. Pulled down in the open field by Omar Gaither, one of the young, speedy linebackers for the Eagles. Well, third down and about 10 coming up. You'll see Romo in the pocket looking left again. Nothing there comes back to his right. Now the protection breaks down. Does the wise thing. Gets rid of the football. Doesn't take a hit. Puts in the hands of Marion Barber. Allow him to try to make a play. Good hustle by the Eagles defense. You'll see a lot of green helmets around Marion Barber as soon as he tries to cut back. You want to have a game with your buddies tonight while you're watching? You decide who's coming on that Eagles front before the snap. It's impossible to figure out. I look at the tape for minutes upon minutes and repetitions. I still can't figure it out. Just four rush again. Romo deep ball. T.O. in the clear. Got it. T.O. Two deep. Two yards. Only Jerry Rice has caught more touchdown passes in National Football League history. A beautifully designed play and executed. The Eagles secondary playing what we call the sticks. They're going to play that first down marker and drive the route. You will see Sean Considine stop moving his feet. That allowed Tio to get over the top. Hope the extra point. You want to talk? Two possessions, two scores. It's the way the last Monday Night Football game at Texas Stadium should start. And as we mentioned, only Jerry Rice in NFL history now has more touchdown receptions than Terrell Owens. He went past our colleague in the studio, Chris Carter, who had the uh, 130 touchdowns in his career as well via the air it was Romo's longest touchdown pass of his career Quinton Dents the rookie brings it out to the 25 yard line Orlando Skandrick a fellow rookie with the tackle and now McNabb's turn Good time, Westbrook out of the backfield. What a shake to get to the 30-yard line and lose where? A gain of four. There are rivals among teams, and then there are rivals among individuals. And you can't tell me, Jaws, that Donovan McNabb doesn't want to go out there now, having seen his antagonist, Terrell Owens, make that long touchdown. You can't tell me that Donovan McNabb doesn't get a little extra heated for him right now, wanting to come back and show the world, hey, that guy did it. Anything he can do, I can do better. I agree with you. I think Andy Reid feels the same way. Andy's going to dial up pass plays to try to make Donovan look good. I don't blame him. This is a this is a pedal to the metal offense. And they're protecting well, and pass is caught at the 47-yard line by Greg Lewis, who caught five balls last week. See, the thing about it is that McNabb and Owens are always going to be linked together. They're going to be linked uh, for the bad times that they had in Philadelphia and all those things that we saw with Terrell Owens and Donovan McNabb. McNabb talked about it yesterday. He said, I'd love to stop it, but it'll always be there. If we go to a red carpet event when we're 50, it'll be there then. That's the acknowledgement of it. the 47 Westbrook on first down 
He's in the waiting arms of Brady James, that middle backer. Jaws, how important is first down play selection for the Eagles offense? Oh, I, I think on first down, they've got to throw the ball. Now, Andy's a, a throw ball kind of quarterback. They want to throw the ball 60% anyway. However, on first down, when you get that base 3-4 front of the Dallas Cowboys and their four defenders in the secondary, that is the best time to attack. And the Eagles love to play that three wide receiver plus. In fact, last week against St. Louis, 40 of their 58 snaps, they had three or more wide receivers on the field. Westbrook's at the very top of the screen. Corral Buckalter is the back next to McNabb. And look at the confusion Westbrook out there causes. And Buckhalter comes to the near side and gets a first down with Zach Thomas's tackle. And there you can see all the confusion trying to find where Westbrook was lined up. Well, there's no doubt about it. When Westbrook lined out wide, a linebacker bumped out to him. It was Brady James on him, and Brady James couldn't run with him. He had to, he had to, he had to hit Westbrook. So it's beyond five yards. You get a penalty against the Cowboys. There it is right here. There's Brady James. Penalties decline. First down. Match against Brian Westbrook. He can't cover Westbrook. It's all about matchups. Andy Reid is tremendous at dictating those favorable matchups, particularly for Brian Westbrook. He can run routes like a wide receiver. Philadelphia moving the ball comfortably thus far. McNabb, 6 of 8, 58 yards. And a free kick. He was all the way offside, so it'll be 5 on where? defense. Number 94, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, first down. To Marcus Ware. Wade Phillips. He's uh, had a lot of stops along the way at Denver and Buffalo. Uh, brief interim stops with New Orleans and Atlanta. Been to the playoffs four times, hasn't won a playoff game, and that's uh, for the moment the heavyweight hanging on this team and this coach. So first and five in Westbrook, a yard shot of the first down. Greg Ellis made the check. You talk about how easily McNabb is moving down the field with this team, and it makes you realize again. If he stays healthy, that's a real good team. But in each of the last three years, he's missed a, a total, I think, of 15 games over the last three years. And the Eagles have subsequently slipped from where they were as a perennial NFC championship team. It hinges on McNabb's ability to stay healthy. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, this is a quarterback's league, the National Football League. If your quarterback is healthy in the caliber of Donald McNabb, you're in the Super Bowl hunt. Second and two, handoff for Westbrook. What a good job to dance around the arms. They get a first down. And taken, tackled uh, late out of bounds, but no flag thrown <laughs> on the play. You know, we talk about that lateral agility. That's what Brian Westbrook has, the ability to make people miss moving laterally, then turn the corner. That's key to his game. And then you got Patrick Watkins coming in to make a play. Brian's going to run by defensive tackles, linebackers. You're going to need to get third-level defenders on him, or he's going to make people miss tackles. Half of the big people can't even see him. That's right. He's outside their line of vision. You know, the Eagles are using that running game to set up their play-action pass game. When they go play-action, they like to throw the ball deep down the field. Hank Basket, the motion man, stays in. Now uh, McNabb used him as an outlet, only a yard. He's shoved to the sideline by Adam Jones. Pac-Man, who uh, missed all of 07 with that uh, well-documented league suspension, played his first game in over 600 days in week one. Yeah, that play right there, Mike, uh, come out of the eye formation, was a design big play. The Dallas Cowboys were able to get pressure on McNabb. He had to go to the check down rather quickly, not allowing him to survey the field for the deep throw down the field. Line up out of the eye here on second and nine. Cavs tried to check it down to Corral Buckhalter. That's incomplete. Brady James is right over there in coverage. Now we'll have a third down for Andy Reid's offense. You know, the Eagles have been doing a really good job thus far in this game of protecting Donald McNabb. I think the Cowboys got to bring a little heat on McNabb like they did last week against Derek Anderson in Cleveland. Of the 24 passes Anderson threw, they blitzed him 16 times and fought two-thirds of the time. I think they'll try to bring some heat on Donovan. 
Six defensive backs. McNabb throws incomplete for Westbrook. Being shadowed by Burnett. Sometimes Donovan will get one of those balls that comes down low. It's tough to catch. He said that was my bad. Field goal coming. Well, if there is a flaw in Donovan's game, it's some of those throws. Mike he has a tendency to throw him in the ground. He'll lock that front knee and force that ball to come over the top and low. I know it's his 10th year in this league, and he's corrected the majority of the mistake. You know, and you kind of, you kind of just live with that every once in a while. He's going to throw one of those balls and go, oh, my goodness. From 44, David Aker. Two drives, two field goals. Well, we know how difficult the uh, hurricane season of 2008 has been down in the Gulf area, the Galveston area being hit just this past week. The Red Cross uh, needs your help, so do your neighbors. Text the word GIVE to the number 24357. Donate $5 to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. Instead of text, messaging rates may apply. Learn more at redcross.org and certainly the Cowboys have been the dominant team in the state for many years and they have fans all over the area in Galveston and we're at a luncheon with Jerry Jones the Cowboys owner uh, their thoughts as well with all the folks down Galveston Houston way Felix Jones the return Felix Jones past David Akers Felix Jones being chased down by Dempse touchdown for the rookie from Arkansas. And you'll see Felix Jones explode through that lane right there, and no one's going to get Felix Jones. Well, I had a chance to watch him last week against Cleveland, and you can see the acceleration when he sees a gap. Felix Jones, great vision and explosion. Found the hole and shot through it. Well, that backfield was great at Arkansas. We knew that. Man, have we seen them this weekend. Darren McFadden with the fabulous game in Cleveland yesterday and his running partner from Fayetteville Felix Jones Jerry Jones alma mater taking it 98 for the Cowboy touchdown that's yeah, funny Mike you mentioned those two quality football players I actually like Felix Jones a little bit more than Darren McFadden now you talk about two great players but I thought he was a better receiver in this NFL game you've got to be able to catch the football and Felix Jones can do that I believe you'll see more things like this, not just a kickoff return. If you're a Cowboy fan, you'll love to see a lot of those. But use them coming out of the backfield as a receiver. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Please. What more do you want out of this game so far? <laughs> you okay, you have a 72-yard bomb. Right, you have oh, a 98-yard yeah. kickoff return. Hey. You got the Eagles trying to keep it close, settling for field goals. There's Jerry Jones. You think he's happy? Wade Phillips, you think he's happy? The, if there's a knock against the Cowboys <laughs> other than losing in playoff games, it's that it's, it's sometimes the Philadelphia Eagles come in here the last two times and crush them and shut them down. That's off the table right now. There's a long way That's to go. That's a long way to go. They're now. not going to crush I love, them. I, I love the star power. I love the big playmakers. This is, I mean, this is what football is about in 2008. you got to be able to put points on the board. Everyone loves running the ball in defense. you got to be explosive. These are two explosive football teams. Money's worth so far. Get your popcorn, get your popcorn ready. ready. I knew that was coming. You bet. In five years since Dallas had that, now Quinton Dempse, the rookie, tries to return the favor, and he's hit at the 25 by Kevin Burnett. Here we go again. Donovan McNabb comes out. Now, that wasn't Terrell Owens, so it may not be the personal rivalry, but you look up on the scoreboard, and you've sort of controlled the game. You've taken little bits here, little bits there, going down the field, and two big bumps, and you're down 14-6. to six. And now, I'm not saying it's critical to score here, but if you got blown out here, that would be a bad series. Punch, counter punch. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys are leading with that hard left and connecting. Now, now they're hitting knockouts. Yeah, they're it's right. not counter punch. This is big oh, uppercuts yeah. knocking somebody down. So from the 24, Westbrook. Good job of getting his extra yards. He gets five to the 29-yard line. Philadelphia is moving the ball effectively. It's different to what you don't punch it in in the red zone. There's one small mistake. 
All of a sudden, you're down eight. And Mike, we saw it yesterday. The Minnesota Vikings moving yeah. the ball. They set up for right. five field goals. They let the Indianapolis Colts hang around. Peyton Manning brings it back. They win the football game. Well, you get that scoring zone. you got to put seven on the board. So you're going to start asking him to go on fourth down, aren't you, John? No, I'm not. <laughs> to the 29 a face mask flag it should have come in I'm surprised that it didn't as Westbrook you could see his head turn sideways no flag in third down wow unless he's the exorcist child somebody grabbed his face well we're gonna see board. it right here well clearly had to grab them now the rule change there's no five yard incidental face mask but Clearly, when your hand comes in and the fingers bend and the helmet and turns, <laughs> that becomes a grasp. So even though you have a hand up in the face, that was not accidental. It was a grab and a turn, and that one got by the striped shirt. Third and five, the Cowboys rush four. Ware is picked up. McNabb for a home run. What a play by the much Talked about first round pick Mike Jenkins out of South Florida. That Greg was Lewis broke free. Incredible play. Greg Lewis broke free. Very similar to the play Terrell Owens scored upon. Donovan had him out there, but Michael Jenkins at the last oh. minute just tipped it away. What a great play by the first round pick Mike Jenkins. Greg Lewis had six for the Eagles if he didn't tip that one away. 25th overall pick out of South Florida. Sav Rocco with the kick. Bouncing. Pac Man Jones will take it at the 26. And it turns into a tackle. Got to give Jason Garrett some props. He anticipated that coverage, dialed up the right play, and the offensive line gave Romo time to let that play develop way down the field. Owens on the bench to start this drive. As the Cowboys go power formation. Two tight ends and blocking from Barber. Marion gets just a couple of yards. Listen, if you think about it, Teal can stay healthy and can keep going. It's not out of reach, guys. 66 touchdowns. Well, it'll be difficult. I didn't say it would be easy. Romo's throw is intercepted. Asante Samuel. He's got blocks downfield, and Samuel takes it to the 28-yard line. The Eagles wanted a face mask on that one, too. And don't get it, but Romo is picked off. It's all about decision making at the quarterback position. You'll see Romo look left, looking down the middle. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to pull it down. Now you've lost sight of the defense. You don't know where people are. Now you don't guess. You've got to throw the football with your eyes on the receiver. There's no way he could get this ball in. Just no way that could happen. He had Miles Austin, but he was double covered by the Eagles. Asante Samuel was brought here for that specific reason. They were minus eight in takeaways last year. Asante Samuel has 19 picks in the last two years, three for touchdowns. He was brought here for this purpose alone to get interceptions for this team. Yeah, and they really paid him right. a ton. Great field position for the Eagles. McNabb will take a shot again for Greg Lewis. Incomplete penalty marker down. Anthony Henry at the coverage. Down. 27 yards on the penalty, and you see some of the complaints there. I feel Lewis certainly had a fistful of jersey with Henry. Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Cowboys. Monday Night Football wrapping up week two of the season. And Tariko, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Susie Culver's with us as well. T.O. at TD, Felix Jones, a kickoff return for touchdown. First in nearly five years for Dallas. Andy Reid's team has moved it very effectively with only two field goals to show. That uh, pass interference call that truly could have gone and maybe should have gone the other way. Puts the Eagles first to goal in the one. The fullback, Tony Hunt, 
leads the way for Westbrook. A penalty marker down. Did uh, Hunt move before the snap? Ball starts. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, let's go back to the Greg Lewis, the penalty on Greg Lewis from Anthony Henry. You'll see right here, Donovan, he knows he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He just throws up down the sideline. Look at Greg Lewis. He grabs Anthony Henry's jersey, pulls him to him. Uh, that was a... Uh, so it was pass interference. It was just the other way. It <laughs> made it look to the, the official through the flag trailing there. It looked like his arm was hooked by Lewis. In fact, Greg, underneath, he was grabbing some jersey. Greg Lewis did a great job of drawing that pass interference. Now, the penalty was on Dan Klecko, who is by trade a defensive lineman, but has played fullback during his Indianapolis time as well. And he was actually brought him to Philly to be a fullback and converted him back to defensive tackle. Lorenzo Booker is checked in the game. He was the fake, and Westbrook is the man who scores. Touchdown. Love the design of that one. That's what you set us up with tonight, George. Jaws. Where's Waldo? Where's where, where, Westbrook? Yeah, you, you got it exactly. And Brian Westbrook in the first quarter had eight carries and two pass receptions. You'll see right out here. Great job by Jason Bott and Hank Baskett on their blocks. Get the ball to Brian Westbrook in space. This is well done right here. Brian with good hands. Catches the ball. Sees that pylon. Takes the pylon. But great downfield blocks by Basket and Avant. But boy, Westbrook is an added dimension that really takes problems for your defense. David Akers adds the extra point. Mike Shanahan. Well, did you notice Jaws was a little stunned, struggled to <laughs> analyze that last touchdown? As Donovan McNabb went past Ron Jaworski, or tied him, I should say. He went past him last week for most wins by an Eagle quarterback. So if McNabb wins tonight and goes to the touchdowns, man, it's going to be brutal. Every, all my records are crushed, but it couldn't happen with a better guy. Donovan Jones with the last there. one. Isaiah Stanback struggles with this one. Has to bring it out now. And a whole mess of trouble. So the Cowboys start at the five. A far different cry from the last kickoff. And here's what it sounded like on ESPN Deportes. And Novato de Arkansas. He's a key one. 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 He's a key Ball start, offense, number 89. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That's Tony Curtis, the third tight end for Wade Phillips' team, so a long field gets longer. Yeah, getting a little sloppy Tony offensively. He's yeah, been, been around a while. Dallas come out there running formation, only one wide receiver on the field, that being number 81, Carol Owens. Three tight ends in the game. From the three, Romo lost it in the end zone, loses it again, and instead of a safety, it turns into a touchdown. Romo on Monday night has disasters happen to him. Think of Buffalo last year. Think of the last two snaps here. Chris Gokong credited with the touchdown. Well, the ball just slips out of Tony Romo's hand, much like his fumble in Seattle. The ball just slithered through his hand. Now he really compounds the problem. He's going to try to pick it up here, and then he's going to try to throw it, I guess. But he's going to fumble the football. There, it slips out of his hand wow. again. And, of course, what turns into a safe, what is a safety, turned into a touchdown for the Eagles. Go Kong right on the football. Third-year man out of Cal Poly. Two touchdowns in 14 seconds for the Eagles. And back-to-back -back snaps bringing frustration to Tony Romo. And Dallas has had the big plays. Philadelphia has the lead. We've only played 20 seconds to the second quarter. It's a couple of mistakes on that one. The kickoff not being handled properly started the mess. And now Felix Jones gets his hands on it again. How did he slip to the side there? Inside of Considine and to the 43 yard line, David Akers had to get in his way before Keenan Jordan brings him down.
How many wow moments do you get in a little over a quarter? A bunch. Here's Tony Romo again. He simply can't hold on to the football. It reminded you, Jaws, immediately of him not being able to hold the snap in a playoff game. It reminded me last night, somebody who could actually relate to this is Jay Cutler, who clearly fumbled the ball, could not hold on to the ball. Why is it so hard to hold on to the ball? I wish I had an answer. You know, the quarterbacks now get a chance to feel the balls. They rub them down. You know, they should be ready for the quarterback. But clearly, you know, Cutler yesterday and now Romo tonight. First down, Marion Barber to the right. Kirk up good. Pushed by Quentin Michael, the safety, working on offensive linemen. And uh, short game. Jaws, you mentioned before the game, the teams now have the opportunity to get their hands. It's not a fresh football coming out of the box. Yeah, and the quarterback actually, you know, they, they make sure they, they've got a ball that they feel comfortable with. It used to be they went through so many balls, you may get a ball that is slippery, that was not rubbed down, where it would slide through your hands if you don't have it firmly. That's not the case anymore. That was always a big crowd with the Super Bowl where they put a new ball in on every play. <laughs> and quarterbacks complain so often that it was just ridiculous to play the biggest game that way. Romo pressure throws for Owens incomplete. Broderick Bunkley was knocking on the front door and sent Tony down. Excellent coverage by Sheldon Brown. The Eagles are in man-to-man -man coverage. He had him. Mano a mano and did a great job of covering him. Did you see the shots before of both Owens and Romo totally deflated, sitting on the bench, wondering what on earth had just happened in the span of what, a minute? A minute and a half? I don't, think, I don't think it was that much. What, two touchdowns? Yeah. 14 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just seemed like a minute because we're having so much fun. But I guess it was 14 <laughs> seconds when it did. Uh, here's where Jim Johnson is at his best. He loves to bring pressure in these situations. Got his linebackers up near the line of scrimmage. Miles Austin is the extra receiver. He's in motion. They come with the heat. And Romo throws to Whitten. Complete first down. Jason to the 42. Not even 17 minutes into week two. Felix Jones in the game. On the reverse. Here he goes. Tankled by Darren Howard, who has lost some weight. Good thing he's a little bit quicker. Or else Felix would be high stepping toward the end zone. That was an outstanding play by Darren Howard. He knifed through the offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys to make that play. Or we, we may have seen another big play from Felix Jones. It was well set up by the Dallas Cowboys if it got into the second level of the defense. Dallas beat Cleveland week one, 28 to 10. Philadelphia beat St. Louis 38 to 3. down to Martellus Bennett, the tight end, holding it high and tight across his chest to the 15-yard line. First down, gain of 21. There was no Jason Witten on the field for that play, and the rookie Bennett made it. Yeah, really well set up by Tony Romo off the play action fake. He looks to his left, play game with the defense. They took that ball down there, and boy, just a great play by Martellus Bennett. I'm going to give a different sports analogy and see if you agree. What we're watching here is the Hagler Hearns fight. It just goes back and forth. It's utterly furious. They've already put up 34 points, not even halfway through the second quarter, and they're not stopping at all. It's like everybody's playing with their hair on fire. Yeah, it's they're funny. just running. Every person in this stadium is standing right now. It's just in that entertainment of the football game. And Romo will take the timeout. A couple of Brave Eagles fans. They're everywhere. <laughs> Trying to survive here in Dallas after the Cowboy timeout, their ball at the 16. And as you mentioned, Gus, timeout done. Fans right back on their feet. On that Cowboys sideline. To Marion Barber. Bouncing to the outside. Only able to get a couple of yards. The whistle blows. Where the ball comes out. The San Diego fans don't want to hear that sentence. Sheldon Brown made the tackle. Barber runs so hard. Sometimes people wonder if he can be a long term back because of how hard he runs. One thing it does statistically, as the game goes on, Barber can really give us some fourth quarter solid numbers. His numbers last year. 
Julius Jones started most of the games, but Barber was the closer. Well, he has one yard on five carries tonight until now. First and goal, Cowboys. Sheldon Brown helps save a touchdown. He explodes into people. He, Barber never goes to the sideline. You said that he wasn't even a starter last year, but he made the Pro Bowl. How often does that happen? And he's a fearsome runner. Well, I mean, you wouldn't want to get in his way, right, Charles? The word we have heard is he's a beast, and you'll see it right here in our super slow-mo, and this is very cool stuff. Look at the power of which he runs. He's not going down. Sheldon Brown, Chris Gokong all come in for the hits. Yards after contact, he moved the pile, running behind his pads. First and goal, Cowboys trying to retake the lead. Romo, Terrell Owens, touchdown number two. Mike, a very interesting matchup yeah. for the Eagles. They ended up with Brian Dawkins, a safety. Normally a box player in the Eagles defense, very good in the run game, but they got T.O. matched up against Brian Dawkins and uh, beat him very easy on that quick slant route. Twenty minutes, forty. Second in NFL history, 30 multiple touchdown games now for Terrell Owens. And Jerry Rice has 44. Quinton Dempse from the floor. And he takes it out. But this surprises me, and I think it surprises other people too, that Romo and T.O. have hooked up that many times, have been that good. It Romo, also surprises what? me that T.O. is second going to Jerry Rice. I guess I didn't know he was that good because he's been so controversial. McMahon set the pressure from Jay Ratliff out of Lombo. Oh, also me. Jay Ratliff came flying off the corner, down and off the play That's action, a... had no chance to survey down the field. There's the first sack of the night either way. This is when the Cowboys front four is very good. Second and long, Westbrook. So patient as he uh, tumbles forward, getting back a yard or two shy of that initial line of scrimmage. Let's go back to T.O. and Romo for a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is... It's a great, great honor for Terrell Owens to be second to Jerry Rice. And it's interesting that this young, undrafted quarterback has helped him in the last year and a half to get there. Do you agree that, that in the case of Owens, that the sort of controversy has masked how good a player he really is? The no three teams. Wherever he has been. Been great. Including here. Yes. Controversy, but positivity. Buck Halter and Westbrook in the backs. Pressure picked up. McNabb's throw. Is that caught? He was hit. The ball was released. And then Jason Avant might have fallen back into possession while on his back after Patrick Watkins hit. And it all gets a first down. Oh, well, you talk about a laser throw from Donovan McNabb right on the numbers of Jason Avant. And he takes a vicious hit from Patrick, Patrick Watkins and holds on to this football. What a terrific job. He gets hit, the ball comes out. He has great awareness to see the ball and catch it. Wow. Avant had three catches last week. Good, tough third down receiver. McNabb loading up deep for Deshaun Jackson. He holds it in. Oh, wow. Did he get over the goal line? Did he get over the goal line? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Whoa. 61 yards. How many times can you say wow in the first half? The fury of this game. There's nobody taking a playoff. There's no sense of taking a breath. There's no sense of exhaling. Everybody just inhales and runs as fast as they can and puts more points up. It's 
fabulous pace. It's unbelievable if hey, they keep this up. Hang on a second. We got to make sure he broke the plane on that, guys. And the Cowboys, I think, might challenge. Oh, it is very close. Ooh, that is close. And it, it, it's a great dance, but it's also one of the all-time bonehead plays, if that did happen. And Wade Phillips is now asking Terry McCauley and the referee if that, in fact, can be challenged. Let's take a peek here. Watches very closely. He has secured the football. Whoa. I saw it live and it didn't look right and you just can't do that. Now he has been explained to us as he is very cocky. He's very self-confident. Dallas is challenged that the runner lost control of the football prior to going into the end zone. Timeout. What's interesting is what happened to the ball because it was just laying there after it happened. It's such a long play you won't have a look right down the goal line. That is very close. The evidence would lead me to believe that he did not break the plane before getting rid of the ball. And who knows what's going on inside that helmet. Now, what happens to the ball afterwards? Adam Jones is out there. He walks away from the ball. Was it a backward pass and the ball dead After there? After review, the runner lost control of the football prior to going into the end zone. By rule, the ball will belong to Philadelphia on the one yard line, first and goal. This is almost like, do you remember the game, was it in San Diego a couple of years ago, where you had a backward pass, a player who got up was untouched for a first down, and in celebration got up and let the ball go behind him? That ball was a questionable call and then reviewed going forward as that would be considered a backward pass. You did the celebration too early. This is so it's not like it's a fumble with the ball lying there. So the Eagles are going to have it at the two yard line. Now to Deshaun Jackson for one second. Supremely talented as you saw there. One of the questions about Deshaun Jackson was cocky attitude. Can we keep him in line? And the Eagles have been working very hard with him and things like that. The word you heard most when talking about him was can he be managed? Because he was so cocky and everybody talks about how confident he is. There's a word that would apply here if Philadelphia doesn't score, and it would be infamous. That would yeah. be an infamous play by Deshaun Jack. Well, 15 years ago, the same end of the field, November of 93, was the Leon, Leon Lett play. Leon Lett. Got it this end. Yeah. All right, first and goal in Westbrook. Take the word infamous out. Well, that takes him off the hook. Right. But, but that's going to be something that's remembered. And when everybody's on the sidelines of Philadelphia celebrating with him, they're going to say, hey, not so fast. Well, the, the infamous could now be, why didn't the Dallas Cowboy defenders, one of them, pick that ball up? Because it was a live football. I guess because nobody expects somebody to do something that dumb that soon. You know, if I you, guess. If you're in one of those keeper fantasy football leagues, that makes up for the touchdown that Westbrook <laughs> slid at the one-yard line right, yeah. in this game last year to kill the clock. <laughs> Halfway through the second quarter, this game anything but over. 27-21. <laughs> if you're doing a play-by-play -play sheet, you're already up to 50 pages. And the, the, the scoring is astonishing. And the, and the amount of energy in here is astonishing. You know, I, I, I know we'll get back to our, our, the play that Deshaun Jackson dropped at the one. It was a beautifully designed play, very similar to T.O.'s touchdown. Yes. They got a quarter's coverage. He goes with Deshaun Jackson. They attacked Roy Williams. He stuttered goes right over the top. 27-21. Felix Jones, touchdown. Westbrook landed a bit awkwardly after he went over the top, so Romo in the Cowboy offense gets a turn. Oh, why not? T.O.'s breaking free again. Safety back there. Owens to the middle of the field and to the 25. There's a marker back near the quarterback. Owens, offense, number 71. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Corey Proctor, 71 who's uh, starting because Kyle Kozer has a foot injury at guard. Flag here. 54-yard penalty erased. You see Flozell Adam push to, push, Flozell Adams push to the inside. Proctor just doesn't get the jam. And T.O. on Sheldon Brown. Little stutter go again. This game is all about big plays. All about double moves. All about being explosive. 
because we have a lot of stars, as Tony would like to say here yeah. tonight. Well, you also have stars in the Philadelphia secondary, three starters in cornerbacks, in Asante Samuel, Sheldon Brown, and Lito Shepard. Shepard, who has a reputation for doing a good job against T.O., so far, they've all gone over tonight. <laughs> Flag makes it first and 20. And Barber to the right. And it's stopped up as Quentin Michael comes on over to make the play. This is what the Cowboys are facing this year as you look at Romo. Great expectations. The Giants are assumed to be a little bit worse because Strahan and Yuman Yora and Shockey. Packers, people thought, might be down because Favre wasn't there. Patriots lost Tom Brady. Colts lost the first game. Chargers lost two. You look around and you say, Who's the team that could emerge as the best? It's the Cowboys. People in Dallas assume the Super Bowl and assume they're going to win it, even though they haven't won a playoff game since 1996. Romo from the 10. Patrick Creighton called it in. He lost the football and got it back. 17-yard line. Sheldon Brown. Patrick Creighton. Just to amplify on that, the other teams may have been diminished. What the Cowboys have done is they've added Felix Jones. You like what he did tonight? Absolutely. Think he runs fast? They've added Zach Thomas, who had these terrible migraines all the time. Turned out to be a deviated septum. Says he's 100% healthy. They've added the Pac-Man, who's playing this year. That man, Jerry Jones, brought them all in. And there is a sense here of manifest destiny. So you don't want to lose this game at home again to the Eagles. Philadelphia won in here last year in December, 10-6. Romo finds space through the hands of Creighton. Incomplete. And only the rare cowboy punch here in this first half. Yeah, that time the Eagles secondary did an outstanding job. They went with a four-man rush. They dropped seven back in the coverage, playing the down and distance situation. That third and 13 forced Romo to move from the pocket. The Try to check it down, it didn't work. Good job by the secondary. First punch for the Aussie, Matt McBriar, and Deshaun Jackson, who was a great punt returner in his days at Pow, back deep. 55 yard punch, here's Jackson looking for room. And down to the 39, brought it back. Getting in the end zone, so two for T.O., two for Westbrook, a kick return, an all-time potential bonehead play by Deshaun Jackson, who had a touchdown on a big pass to McNabb and then put it on the ground, thinking he was already in the end zone. And a fumble in the end zone. And Romo fumbling in the end zone. McNabb complete for the 45-yard line, another catch for Jason Lamont. And let's say this so far tonight after that 16-yard game. Philadelphia has moved the ball pretty easily on this Dallas defense. And Mike, remember this. Their number one and number two receivers are not even playing in this game. Reggie Brown and Kevin Curtis are out. Yeah, their number one receiver is playing for the Cowboys in this game. Oh, come the best on. Just come on. Come on. Just come on. He was the best. Donovan McNabb, as great as he is, he was the best receiver Donovan McNabb ever had. Sure was. Okay, that's my point. A couple years ago. McNabb trying to get away and cannot do it in the grasp and brought down by Greg Ellis. Well, Greg Ellis was being blocked by tight end L.J. Smith and he just couldn't handle him. But what I love to see about a healthy Donovan McNabb, boy, when he's in that pocket, does get a pocket, he's been very good. But right here, he has no chance to throw the football. Greg Ellis was on him too quick. Donovan tried to step up in the pocket. Nowhere to go. A healthy Donovan McNabb, because when he was unhealthy, all through Philadelphia for years, there were rumors that he would leave, that he might end up in Chicago, he might end up in Minnesota. You know, that, that they were tired of him. Now he's healthy, now look what he does. Now they're happy to have him. That sack by Ellis, his 10th against Philadelphia, most of any active player against the Eagles. McNabb's throw was low, it was caught by Lorenzo Booker, traded from Miami. 
It'll be third down and about 10. Tony had mentioned McNabb now healthy. He's a different quarterback. It's about weight transfer. Look at him come off the back foot. That was the leg that was injured. He drives off that back foot. You see the hip torque driving that ball. I mean, that, that ball he just put in, that extra bump, the one he just threw to Booker. I mean, he is just stroking that ball in there with great velocity and accuracy. He told us last night he became an arm thrower last year, coming off that ACL surgery at the end of 06. Third and nine, deep drop. Lots of time. Good protection. Can't cover him forever. Deshaun Jackson, first down by the 24, a gain of 21. Not without his, his controversies in his career, Donovan McNabb. Not the most popular guy ever in Philadelphia, right? But look at him now. Well, let me get back to this. Remember the 14 second play he had here in Dallas? I know this wasn't 14, but this was an outstanding job by the offensive line once again. And what I like about Donovan's game now, Tony, there was no panic. You no heard in 2004 that 14 second scramble yeah, before right. completing the deep ball. It looked like he was on the way to doing that when Greg Ellis was trying to pull him down and he was trying to get away. We had a lot of time there, all offensive line. On second down, McNabb. Down the scene. Too long. And incomplete for the tight end, L. Jason. Andy Reid was telling us the other day about how a team works real hard. Right there. Right. 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 to the face. Defense, number 96. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And the team works real hard. And he said they went out 38-0 last week on St. Louis. And he said you know, his phrase was, you don't like it when a team falls on the pavement. He said the games he cherishes are the knockdown drag out fights within the division. Now, I think he may have been referring to 10-6 games or 13-10 games. Maybe not with scoring like this. But you can't, and Andy Reid doesn't look like he's juiced up at the moment. But i got to believe that Andy Reid and Wade Phillips, everybody coaching, everybody playing, is loving this game right here. Yeah, the Eagles spread it out with four wide receivers. They're going to attack. After Dallas's sixth penalty for 60 yards, a problem last week also. They all pointed to Westbrook pre-snap. <laughs> they kind of smelled that one coming when they got him. Where's Waldo? Well, we're closing in on a Monday night football record for the most points in the first half of a Monday night football game over the first 38 years in a couple of games. You get seven more, we'll equal that record here tonight. Been a lot of great Monday night moments in Texas. Mike, I've always been a big believer on first down passing. The Eagles, their 17 first down plays, nine passes, six to seven, 94 yards. Right now, it's second and 10. You're a big believer in passing on every guy. <laughs> you are going to isolate it to first. It's mad. The ends meet at the quarterback. Donovan got away. Oh, man, what a play. First down, vintage McNabb there. Vintage, a healthy Donovan McNabb. Just a great job by Donovan. I'll tell you what, this is almost like Eli Manning in the Super Bowl. Just knocking tacklers away, driving his feet. But Donovan, once he breaks from this pile, he sees the running room. That's all that off-season conditioning hard work that Donovan does out in Arizona. And the super slow will give you a sense of the frustration of how close Jay Ratliff and Greg Ellis and DeMarcus Ware were to having McNabb. Okay, they're going to review that play. I don't know if they're going to review if McNabb's knee came down as they were pulling on him or not. We'll see. It's the last two minutes, so obviously any stoppages for replay happened from upstairs in the replay booth. The ruling on the field stands, first and goal, Philadelphia. Okay, we're back. Uh, what they did review was not if McNabb's knee was down, but where he was going out of bounds, if the spot was correct. And very quickly that was taken care of. It was correctly spotted. And it's at the 10. Since it's touching the 10, that means it's first and goal. Players are going to need oxygen at halftime uh, at, at this pace. You mentioned Donovan McNabb, what a great play he made, and you talked about the frustration that he showed. He's probably frustrated having a run. He doesn't like to run anymore. He ran a lot when he was a kid. You know, he's not, he doesn't want to run anymore. Well, the way he's throwing, he doesn't need to run anymore. 
Baskin and Avon to the left. Westbrook is the back. Smith and Lewis to the right. And they run with Brian Westbrook. Down to the five. Plenty of time left here. Timeout situation. Two apiece. Yeah, if I'm the Cowboys right now, I got to be thinking of using my timeout. Yep. You know, they could be at two scores behind here uh, in a heartbeat, so they may have to conserve some of their timeouts to get back in this, get a score before halftime. We've seen some awful clock management the first couple of weeks of the season. Yes, we have. We need a correspondence course for some. McNabb to Lorenzo Booker, only going to get a half yard in front of Adam Pac-Man Jones. It'll be third down and stops the clock with a minute five to go. You know, you mentioned Lorenzo Booker. He is very similar uh, in his stature and style to Brian Westbrook. Yes. They had both of those guys on the field that time. You know, they're both excellent receivers, route runners. They create matchup problems for the defense. Booker in his second year out of Florida State. Traded by Parcells and the Dolphins to Philadelphia on draft day. Well, where's Westbrook? That's item one. He's lined up in the backfield. Yeah, the Eagles are not normally a, a big fade team down here to hang basket, the big tall wide receiver, but, but they're a big slant team in this area. McNabb on the move. Is he going to run for it? Stays in bounds on the two hits, but not the third. The initial hit by Anthony Henry, cleaned up by Patrick Watkins. And before a Philly field goal attempt, Dallas will take time out. Just 49 seconds to go. Boy, Donovan took some hits on that sideline and stayed in bounds. 6-2, 240 now. Gets a little pressure, feels it, moves out. He had to run looking downfield. Boy, you see these couple hits right there. And those are linebackers and yeah, you want him to stay him. healthy, Joe. Yeah, us. I agree I mean, with you. It, it's so fascinating to him that he feels good for the first time in five years that he's out there getting knocked around. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kevin Burnett, although Kevin Burnett's a linebacker, he only weighs 227. Donovan's probably closer to 245. Akers from 22 adds to his 34 and 44 yard field goals. And Philadelphia has hung 24 points on Dallas in this second quarter to lead by nine. You see McNabb there, um, and Andy Reid has been his coach every single day that he's been in the pros. It's rare that that happens. It's 10 years now. I had some thought going into this year that maybe Andy Reid would not be back given the horrifying tragedy at, at home with his children, with his sons, each one being incarcerated. Uh, and I thought that if Andy Reid left because he said this is too much for me, that he had been the great protector of Donovan McNabb. He loves McNabb. Both are back. And... Their bonding is the spine of the Philadelphia Eagles for 10 years now. Donovan availed himself to Andy Reid, said, I want to be the guy. If you need to talk to anyone, talk to me. We've been close for all these years. You hear Andy Reid say all the time, Donovan McNabb is my quarterback. I know he's gotten beaten up physically. I know he's gotten beaten up in the media. He always knew that I had complete faith in him and that if he were healthy, he'd be my guy no matter who was drafted, no matter what anybody on Sports Talk Radio said, no matter what anybody wrote. And the fact that one is healthy and both are happy give the Eagles a bonding that other teams in the league draws, they don't have. They're here for each other on the field and off. Felix Jones to take the kickoff. For about four yards deep, going to bring it out. He's already taken one all the way tonight. And brought down at the 21-yard line. Dallas is a timeout, 39 seconds left, so Eagles-Cowboys in 04. That was the game that McNabb had that wild scramble play, the 14 seconds you talked about. We've passed that to the third highest scoring first half in the now 38 plus year history of Monday Night Football. Colts Broncos, 1988. The largest first half score. It was a Halloween game at Mile High. There's still 39 oh, seconds. It was an Indian. I beg your pardon. That's right. It was an Indian. Yeah. You're right, Charles. Record still yeah, right. <laughs> inside. One more to Jason Witten. Hurt his shoulder earlier in the first half. Comes back out inbounds, only two yards. One timeout on the turning clock. Go, 
That took about 13 seconds. Romo steps up for Witten. Got it in stride. They'll use their timeout here. 34 yard line. Timeout Dallas. Seven seconds left. They're in field goal range for Folk. Jason Witten, the big play. Excellent job by Tony Romo extending the play, allowing Jason Witten to uncover deep down the field. He runs right by Brian Dawkins. The key was Romo moved in the pocket and allowed Jason Witten to uncover. Great throw by Tony Romo on the move. He can throw from so many platforms as he moves in the pocket. A gain of 42 yards. Romo was undrafted. Witten, the third round pick of Jerry Jones. When those two came together, they were on the same bus coming from the airport after the draft, and they have been linked since, and they've uh, both thrown. So Nick Folk, who remember, hit the big 53-yarder in Buffalo twice to win the Monday Nighter. He'll have remember it well. Yes. <laughs> He'll have this one officially 51 yards to add three more before the half. I believe he'll knock this right through, Tony. Staying inside, yes, from 54 yards. Good call. I watched him in warm ups. He was, he was hitting pretty darn well, good. Well, you remember the Buffalo game, too, because at the end of the game, there were 10,000 wings underneath the seat. <laughs> it so, was good, though. So this becomes the second highest scoring first half in Monday Night Football history. And how about that? Right down the field with one timeout and the big play to Witten. It's not one of those plates that you slide in and out and say, oh, the next guy will be in. Pat Bowen and Mike Shanahan are absolutely in sync on that, but you're right, Mike. There are only three coaches in the league that make that call. Oh. This could be the final play of the half as it is returned to the sideline by Greg Lewis, taken out there. Six touchdowns, four field goals. The Cowboys had 23 plays, 24 points. They trailed by six. Heck of a half here is the final season opener. Here in Irving at Texas Stadium. Cowboys moving to their new digs in Arlington come next season. Tony Romo had a couple of big mistakes in the first half. He had his team down six and they get the ball first as we start the third quarter. David Akers kicks it. Felix Jones from the two. He's taking one back tonight. Got down the sideline again. Good kick return by Jones as he's not out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Okay, Tony, <laughs> put the columnist hat back on. Where do you begin to tell the story in a few words okay. of this game? Well, here, first of all, before you start writing, you think this, that it's a privilege to watch a game like this, right. to watch the NFC East powerhouse teams banging on each other quite like that and then you begin to write that it's games like this where you understand why people pay the money that they pay to athletes like Terrell Owens and Tony Romo and Donovan McNabb and Brian Westbrook. This is a privileged kind of game to watch. Romo and the Cowboys start from the 34. Didn't have much of a running game in the first half. Marion Barber changes that to start this half. Game of 18 to the Philadelphia 48. Roger Bunkley makes the tackle. Where do you see Dallas adjusting in this half, Ron? Mike, they've got to get their running game going. They've got to, number one, rest their defense a little bit. They've been on the field for far too many snaps. This is a little counter game because Eagles are a fast, slow defense. Give the counter, fake it left, bounce it back to the right. Good run by Marion Barber. But they've got to get some balance back on their offense. Barber a break. Felix Jones lines up in the backfield and Witten motions out of there. Romo peeling out of there. Flag down. Thrown away. Looks like a hold on the Cowboys. Still a use of hands to the face. Offense number 76. Ten yard penalty. First down. The four time Pro Bowler flows out of it, right? Six DBs and able to get a guy streaking free behind that. And he glad you show us that double move really setting it up for T.O. First and 20, Eagles bring some heat and Romo got rid of it quickly. 
and the pass is incomplete. Listen to Tom Jackson and rumor at halftime. Uh, well, first off, poor Tommy, defensive guy, watching his first <laughs> half going nuts. But will Philadelphia bring more pressure in your mind in the second half? And they just did on that play. In fact, uh, that's what Tony was doing. He was throwing the hot route uh, out to Martellus Bennett in the flat because there was pressure in his face. You've got to hit those. Well, Jim Johnson's going to see that the pressure got to him. He wants to get Tony Romo to play fast. To do that, he'll bring some heat. He'll bring some safety blitzes. He'll bring some corner blitzes. Marion Barber back in as the back. Fullback Deion Anderson led the way to the right. Barber came to the left. Sheldon Brown finished it off, but the work was done by Chris Gokong, the guy who fell on the touchdown earlier, his first NFL touchdown after the Romo mistake in the end zone. Third down, 22. You mentioned the defensive pressure of the Eagles. And now this is always one of those fun downs, third down and long to see who's coming. Who is Jim Johnson, the uh, veteran defensive coordinator, going to break? Well, you know, he'll roll two, eight defensive line there, so he's always going to have some, some fresh guys that down four to get after the quarterback, and these linebackers love to play downhill. They won't in this situation yes. because they have a dime on the field, six defensive backs. Because of the distance from eight, third and 22. And we're almost forced to get ready for Bennett. Oh, what a play in the safety spot by Weapon X. Ryan Dawkins timed it perfectly. And knocked it away from Bennett. Fourth down. Great range by Brian Dawkins. He covers a lot of field here. The ball is just on the hands of Martellus Bennett, and he knocks it away. Good job by Brian Dawkins. He's like a missile out there from that safety position. He will hit you. Turns 35 in October, may not have the skills that he had a few years ago, but certainly that knowledge to get it there. And Breyer gets it away. And he can't kill it, so it's a punt of 60 and that of 40. And Donovan McNabb and the Eagles will come back on the field. Penalty marker down by the sideline. During the kick, illegal block in the back, receiving team, number 56. Ten-yard penalty from the 20. Timeout. <laughs> Great. We get so used to seeing it tacked on to what happened before, but a re-kick now instead. So McGuire will do it again. Now this time it'll go out of bounds, so instead of the ball being at the 20, Philly's going to take over at the 16, and we check in with Susie Colbert. Mike, I guess perception is reality. At the half, I asked both coaches how the Eagles were managing to move the ball so well. Wade Phillips said, I don't really see it that way. I see a fumble, an interception, an interference call. We knew they were going to go for the deep ball. Andy Reid, man, a few words, used one word, protection. Hey, Donovan McNabb is getting time in uh, 37 plays, 222 yards. Pretty good number. What game is Wade Phillips watching? <laughs> I mean, the Eagles go up and down the field against his defense. Oh, first down, oh, 16. I don't get that one. And uh, Brian Westbrook engulfed by Jay Ratliff, the nose tackle. <laughs> Time here to throw out of Deshaun Jackson's hands and incomplete. And Jackson had to play in the first half where he got toward the goal line and gave up the ball before he crossed. Eventually they did score, but uh, Deshaun Jackson, 2005 U.S. All-American Bowl, high school all-star game on national TV in San Antonio, uh, tried to score and ended up doing a swan dive from the five. He came up a yard short yard of that short. swan drive. <laughs> yeah. five. And was flagged wow. by sportsman like conduct. So, not his first uh, Lindsey Lindsay Jacobellis moment. Remember yeah. the yeah. snowboarder yes. from Torino in the 06 the Olympics. McNabb had hit seven in a row before that one. It's Westbrook. I'm not going to get there. Good first hit by Terrence Newman. Ken Hamlin with the finish, which was first Pro Bowl last year. The submarine by the Cowboys. Westbrook goes over the top. Good kick by Rocca. Beautiful kick. Took Adam Pac-Man Jones all the way back to the 15. 
If he can get to the near side, he has space. But Sean Considine got to him at the 20. And stops the return. Celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, Mexican Independence Day. Starting at sundown tonight, celebrated all day tomorrow. Romo to Witten. Seven yards. 27 yard line drop. Not played frenetic. That's why he studied Tom Brady. So far, he's pretty good. Made one mistake tonight. 27 years barber. Keeping the play alive. Tackled by half the Eagles defense. Third down coming back. It's kind of, kind of interesting, and he went to study the film of Brady for doing that, and Tom gets hurt standing tall yeah. in the pocket this, this year. But uh, he felt it could help his offensive line, Ron, if he was able to be more calm and not slide up, slide up, slide up, and get closer to the rush. Well, frenetic quarterbacks, those guys that move around in the pocket when there's no pressure, do hurt their offensive line. They move in the pressure. They move in the sacks. I've always said Tom Brady is the most mobile quarterback in the national football. I don't mean running around. I mean those subtle moves in the pocket to free yourself up to throw the football. You're going to study anyone. Study Brady. <laughs> or Peyton. You are too? Yeah, Pey Peyton's that. pretty down yeah. here. Third and a couple. T.O. in the slot. Handed to Felix Jones the other way in the first down. Coming out past the 32-yard line. And the Cowboys move the team. You know, watching Felix Jones, well, you get the same feeling you have with Adrian Peterson. He's like one step away from breaking a big play. I enjoyed being at practice on Saturday, and when Felix Jones would be involved in the play and make a play, Jerry Jones had a smile. Like, that was one of my own. Now, what are my guys? They are both Arkansas guys, and as Mort so, said so well during the draft, our Chris Mortensen, truly Jerry, Jerry coveted either getting McFadden or Felix Jones from Arkansas. Into this Cowboy team. On the far side, Tony Curtis, the tight end, catches out of bounds in front of Asante Samuel at the 35. It's just so easy, though, if you're Jerry Jones, to give clothing to Felix Jones and you don't have to take out the labels because they're made exclusively for Mr. Jones, so that works out. I'm glad you got that in. Well, you know, <laughs> I've been waiting the whole game on that one. I think. Mike, what I'm seeing out of this Eagle defense, a little more zone in the secondary, forcing Tony Romo to check it down, the short passing game. Romo over the top to Barber. After linebacker on skates and able to get the first down to a nice post catch run by Barber as he knocked down Stuart Bradley. The longest we've gone in this whole game without a score. Pretty close. <laughs> Yeah, Romo, once again, you'll see calm in the pocket, surveying the field, looks left, looks right, and checks it down to Marion Barber. Real good job of standing tall in the pocket, finding an open receiver. Gets up on his toes to deliver the football over those big, tall, on-rushing defensive linemen. And sometimes you got to throw over your big, tall offensive linemen. Right. <laughs> Tony Curtis move and a second hat thrown that usually means two fouls, the movement penalty, and perhaps unsportsmanlike conduct on Trent Cole. That's what the hat signifies? It can't. Oh. There are two fouls on the play. Ball start, offense, number 89, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 58. By rule, the false start is disregarded. 15-yard yes. penalty on the defense, automatic first down. Well, if you're a defender and the guy in front of you moved, what are you supposed to do? Stop, you come across and hit him. This is football. You probably don't have to hit him quite like that. Well, and the hands are up by the face. Yeah. Well, that wasn't the call, call, was part. it? Yeah. It was just personal foul. Okay. Terry should be more clear to me so I can understand that. It seemed like he tried to this take his football, head off, isn't Josh. it? Well, it's football, Tony. Oh. This isn't a tennis match. <laughs> Another mistake by the Eagles brings the Cowboys into third territory at the 43. And Romo runs Barber. Good hole open. And Marion Barber takes it to the 24-yard line. Uh, he finishes off runs. Gain of 19. He's just a fun guy to watch running the football. I mean, everything is shaking. Everything is moving. 
Nice job on the lead draw here. Whitten leads up inside. Nice hole from Aaron Barber. Gets to the outside. Look at him just knock Osilio Hansen out of the way. He's always going to finish the run. He's not looking to go down or run out of bounds. One of the guys who helped open that hole, the right guard, Leonard Davis, considered a bust when he was out in Arizona. Number two overall pick in the draft. Went from a tackle spot to a guard here in Dallas. Made the Pro Bowl last year. Good block there. Cowboys trying to take the lead. Romo brings it down to Curtis, and the tight end is thrown down by Omar Gaither. No looking on the play. Once again, a real nice job by Tony Romo. He, he's practicing what he preaches. He's staying calm in the pocket. People around him. Nothing open down the field. Eagles doing a much better job right here. Love this. Up on his toes. Coming over the top. Following through with the throw. Good mechanics will lead to consistent quarterback. I love what he said. I want to be fast from the snap, dropping back. Slow and calm in the pocket. And then fast again when I'm ready to let it go. Get that ball out of your hand. Fast, slow, fast. Two on the play clock. Barber. To the 16-yard line. Michael and Dawkins, the safeties are there. So, you know, Mike, tackle. we talked about the size of the Eagles offensive line as being the heaviest in the National Football League. Well, right behind them in second place the Dallas Cowboys. They have 327.4 pounds on the offensive line per player. So the Eagles front four is a little bit light in the seat. So I think now yeah. they want to establish the running game, yeah. establish the line of scrimmage, get Barber into it. Thanks for that point four. <laughs> I appreciate that. that. That was for Mike Ditka. He loves when I yeah. Yeah. really get the points in there. In the first down, it's waiting at the 13. Romo towards Barber out of the backfield. Cowboy touchdown. Mike, once again, play calling is about probability, not certainty. Third down and less than five yards, you're likely to get man-to-man -man coverage. Jason Garrett dialed up the man passing play. He got Marion Barber matched against Stewart Bradley, a linebacker, could not run with him. An outstanding play call by Jason Garrett. Third touchdown of the night, passing for Romo. Holt gets the point. The Cowboys regain the lead. It's like Favre with the new playbook. I've got four or five plays down. Don't ask me to go deep in the playbook, all right? Okay. We we'll just keep feeding you that uh, one. Yeah. Keep running it until they stop it, right. Mike. Keep giving the slant, Coach. 31 to 30. Uh, Here comes Quentin Dempse. That's by a wall of white-shirted Cowboys. 25. Fifth lead change of the night. Dallas is on top. McNabb got away from DeMarcus Ware and got it out to Carell Buckhalter. Ken Hamlin with the tackle. The sense of it coming. Yeah, that Mike, was great. You, we, we talk about pocket awareness. You almost have to have that sixth sense. You'll see Donovan step up after the fake to Westbrook. Here's DeMarcus Ware coming around the edge. You can't see him. Feel him. Donovan does a really good job of extending the play and finding Buckhalter for the check down. Great play. Really well. Get away. That's great pocket awareness and feel. On uh, second and three, it's Westbrook seeking the first down. Zach Thomas brings him down across the 40. But Tony, it's nice to know that you're in the building with the best quarterback in Philadelphia Eagles history. Now, I don't know which, which one it one? is. Is that Jaws or is that Donovan McNabb? Now, I'm giving Jaws some grief on that, obviously, but seriously, most wins, it's one, two. McNabb just went past Jaws. Touchdown passes we saw tonight getting even there. All the stat categories with Jaws still leads. Donovan will pass him here pretty soon. But here's where he doesn't ever pass him. He doesn't pick up the check like Jaws does. <laughs> Better to go out and keep with Jaws yeah, than with Donovan. Right. Um, they're both pretty good. <laughs> War green and share their green. Yeah. The Nabs throw cannot be caught right in by Hank Basket. That's incomplete. Now, let me, let me be serious about this. I was kind of being a little facetious about it. Jaws, I'm not saying it because we have to deal with you 16 weeks a year, but you're really loved in Philadelphia. 
Donovan has never gotten to that point of being beloved. Now, at the end of your playing career playing, were you loved in Philly? No, not necessarily. I mean, when I played, it, it was typical of being a quarterback in the city of brotherly love. There have been games I was booed by 70,000 and cheered by 70,000. Show the people the ring. Well, hold it up for the camera. I, I, I always have the ring. You know that. I always, always have the ring. you got to get a camera shot of that ring. Fans urging on the defense. Three-man rush. McNabb gets away and completes it to Hank Basket. Yard shy, 31. Donovan is just tremendous in the pocket this evening. He feels the pressure that Ratliff in his face rather quickly, tugging out his jersey. He still is able to find Hank Basket. Really good job by Donovan. You'll see Ratliff grab him right there. Just that subtle and little what does slide he do? up in the pocket. He puts the biscuit in the basket. Oh, boy, I teed that one up for you. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Eagle fans, you may have seen the 62 there of Max Team Gillis. He's playing guard Sean Andrews, back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, out with a back injury. So at right guard, Philadelphia missing one of their best. Third and one, the corner for Westbrook, got it. First down, Just one half step away from Anthony Spencer chasing him down. The others have a home version of the game, and McNabb has the live version of the game at the moment. And McNabb has survived 10 years with one team, in a very he's going to four NFC title games yeah. and a pro bowl, uh, and a Super Bowl. And he's had a great career. And he's joined the hit with Andy Reid, and that's one of the reasons yes. he's been successful. Fires down the scene. What a good play by Zach Thomas running back in his 13th year at a Texas Tech. Well, that was an outstanding play by Zach Thomas. This play was dialed up to get LJ Smith matched up against Zach Thomas. And look at the play by Thomas. He read LJ Smith's arms and but eyes. He didn't even see the ball. Picked, exactly. He didn't even he see the ball. He was reading LJ Smith, and he picked his arm but, up and knocked that okay, ball down. There's a certain, That's a veteran there's play. There's a certain amount of fortune in that, you know? that the pass hits you oh, in you the may, arm. You may say it's fortune. I would say it's intelligence by reading LJ Smith's hands and his eyes and reacting to what he was doing. Just a little bit of fortune. Zach yes, Thomas will agree to disagree. Uh, second down, McNabb. Get to Sean Jackson. Caught it. Held on. At the 35 in front of Ken Hamlin. It's a game of 13. And a first down. You, know, you guys mentioned Zach Thomas and the intelligence, the veteran experience. He's not in on all the passing downs on third downs. But he's enjoying, as we visited with him earlier this week, enjoying not having to be the team spokesman, not having to be yeah. the guy who answers every question when it comes up after a game, as he was in Miami for many years. Good and bad. Still a darn good football player. Not what he used to be, but darn good. Nab nearly fell. Westbrook lost the football. Very rare for him, but he's able to get it back at the 46-yard line. But Jason like Hatcher was in there. With his fourth fumble, Mike, in like ever? I mean, Westbrook almost never fumbles the football. You'll see right here in the stretch play. Donovan struggles a little bit. Probably forced. Westbrook to take his eye off the football. And that'll, and that'll be McNabb's fumble because Westbrook never clearly had control of the ball as Donovan was stumbling out. Boy, Mike is really good. He's on top of all the, you know, he's going to get This is, this is this his strength. job, Jaws. <laughs> I know you've been working with him a while. This is his job. <laughs> and he's darn good at it. <laughs> Why's a quarterback to get blamed for that? <laughs> Looking for Roy Williams, not out there. Four on contusion for the Cowboys' safety. Second and 22. Had McNabb get out of there. Had to get out of that one. Underneath shovel to Westbrook. Ryan Westbrook to the 29-yard line and a flag down. I don't want to tell you who that pass looked like because you told me not to mention that name, but why don't you say it, Mike? Brett Favre? Yeah, Brett Favre. Yeah. Yeah. Might be him. <laughs> Just an amazing job by Donovan. Is he over the line of scrimmage, which was the 46 when he threw it? The flags are downfield. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, defense, number 25. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. So it'll take it all the way from the 46 into the red zone. And the safety, Patrick Watkins, in because of that Roy Williams injury we just mentioned. Guilty there. This continues the pattern of the first half in the sense that as soon as the team gets a lead, the other team do does come back. It's right, right back in the scoring position. 
However, right now, this break Dallas defense, Tony, looks a little bit gassed right now. McNabb is wearing them down. Westbrook is wearing them down. They're trying to rotate fresh bodies in there, but they're starting to get tired. Interesting. Take Watkins out as well here after that play. So both Watkins and Roy Williams out as the quarter. Fumble in the end zone, kickoff return, Barber with a touchdown, 51-yard field goal. A little bit of everything here tonight, a darn good fourth quarter. Monday Night Football Week 2 from Texas Stadium in Irving. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Susie Palmer down on the sideline. That last play, Patrick Watkins, the safety was hurt, Roy Williams already out. Been in the secondary of the Cowboys as this quarter begins, and Brian Westbrook's next up at the bottom of your screen on Greg Ellis. McNabb down the middle. Caught by Lewis. Just shy. Greg Lewis takes it to the goal line. First and goal, Philadelphia. Mike talked about the play calling of Jason Garrett. Excellent play call by Marty Morning. You talked about the depleted secondary of the Dallas Cowboys. Marty Morning would spread them out and attack with the pass and got a favorable matchup. Mentioned Marty Morningwig, much maligned when he was the head coach in Detroit. Uh, Andy Reid turned the play calling over to him. Andy, a good play caller in his own right, but um, he and Marty on the same page. First and goal, Dan Cleco in to block Westbrook. Trying to get in, he does. Eagles back on top. Touchdown. This game has the feel of a game that the last team with the ball is going to win. Yeah. Nobody's going to stop anybody ultimately. And whoever gets the ball with four minutes left is going to march all the way down and win the game. Excellent second effort by Brian Westbrook. Here Keith Davis has him stop. He keeps fighting, keeps battling. He's scratching and crosses the plane for the Eagles what touchdown. Well, touchdowns tonight. Three. Three tonight. Wow. One receiving, two rushing. What a job using his body and his balance. You know, you think a big back's doing that down at the goal line. 5 10 2 3 worked it in. It's like an arena game, Mike. Could not play their game. Scheduled for Sunday, moved to Monday against Baltimore, and we'll see going forward what will happen as the damage has been assessed. They play the next couple of games on the road. That's uh, one of the small items on the back end of. Hurricane Ike and our thoughts with the folks in Texas here tonight. Jones in the three. Felix takes it to the 30-yard line. Felix Jones in the return. They're down six after the sixth lead change of the game. Sounds like an NBA game. Romo back to work. Finding space directing traffic for Whitten, who feels like he got pushed downfield. It was just incomplete in second down. Tony wants to know where the flag was. To Barber has blockers. Marion Barber down the field across midfield to the Eagles 44. Gain of 25. Gator attack. Uh, excellent job by Tony Romo. When you run a screenplay, you play a game with the defense. You draw the defense to you. Chris Kong in his face. He just flicks it out to Marion Barber. Got those big hosses up in front, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling down the field. But a really good job by Tony Romo. You're going to take the hit, throw the football accurately. I like the little side arm delivery to throw the football around Chris Kong. Down to Whitten. He does that so often, too, where he's just able to change the direction of his body to get three or four more yards. Excellent tight end. Since he came in the league, only Gonzalez, Kansas City, has more catches. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned his ability to catch the football and gain yards after the grab, but what he did there showed his intelligence. The Eagles, once a game, came with the blitz. You see Brian Dawkins coming off the edge. That means Jason Witten is hot. The ball must come to him quickly. That's a, a tight end and a quarterback seeing the field with the same eyes and adjusting properly. Second and short. 
Barber will get the first down. That's the 34 yard line. Stuart Bradley with the tackle. Do you know how good this game is? Yes. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned Jessica Simpson, which is absolutely impossible. What a, what a shame. The Cowboys, if you look down at this field, you see Romo, you see that big blue star. I think now, and you guys may disagree, I think that the Cowboys are the largest franchise in all of American sports. I think that star is right now bigger than the Yankee pinstripes. I think everything they do is about bigger and better, that their bigger is bigger than your bigger, their better is better than your better. Jerry Jones is the architect of all this, and yes, the ringmaster of this circus, the guy who says, embrace the light of fame and fortune, bring T.O. here, let Tony Romo date whoever he wants, make sure that people are talking about the Cowboys, how about them Cowboys, all the time, he's selling that all the time. You think they're bigger than the Yankees? I do. Really? I do in America. I do. I think wow. they've surpassed them because of what the NFL has done in baseball and because of that blue star. This is the area of the field where the Cowboys like to take shots at the end zone. Romo. Josh. One spot away from Whitten, who is still in the end zone. Mike, I am so impressed with that comment. You were actually paying attention at practice on Saturday. This is the area of the field where the Cowboys do love to attack, and it was just off the fingertips of Jason Whitten. Beautifully designed play, just missed by Tony Romo. You, you pat yourself on the back for going I to pet, practice. I as if it's on the back. As it is somehow important. practice. You think Mike would have known that? It's if practice. It's what are we talking goal? about here? <laughs> practice. <laughs> Boy, that was a good rant. Thank you, Mr. Iverson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Felix Jones has checked in the game. Here he goes. Gain of a yard. Quentin Michael, the more you watch Philadelphia, Quentin Michael keeps making more plays and more plays, game in, game out. Dawkins gets all the public and safety. This guy at a Boise State, pretty good. He's becoming a nosy player, sticking his nose and up the line of scrimmage, making plays. And Adrian, excuse me, not Adrian Peterson, but Felix Jones <laughs> will learn. I think those two great backs, they will learn. In the National Football League, those runs that you yeah. bounce to the outside in college, you can't do that at this level. All the other guys are almost as fast as you. Barber's back in. Miles Austin, top of the screen, third receiver. First game he's played this year. Missed the opener with an E and Pressure comes, pass to Witten. Dawkins wraps him up. And from the 29, a field goal attempt will be 46 yards in a six-point game. Yeah, and once again, Jim Johnson came with the heat on Tony Romo. He forced a quick release from Tony Romo to Jason Witten. Ryan, Ryan Dawkins in perfect position to make the tackle four yards short of the first down. Just back to that last Philadelphia touchdown. You were wondering at 36-31, do you go for two to take a seven-point lead? Not at all. So early in a high-scoring no. game. Get your sure points so two field goals don't beat you. They would only tie you. Conventional wisdom says don't go for two unless you have to. Mike Shanahan. Officially 47. Knocked it through yet again. With folks, 47-yard field goal makes it a three-point game, 37-34. And guys, we are witness to the 98th meeting between the Cowboys and the Eagles and the number one total scoring game in Cowboy Eagle history. 70 points was the record. That was the 0-4 game down here where McNabb had the four touchdowns, 49-21. Quentin Dempsey will bring this has been close to hitting one all night and gets a big return here out past midfield. Well, Dents did his best Felix Jones and put Donovan McNabb in business at the plus 45. Deshaun Jackson who adds to an NFL milestone here tonight, that gain of eight. Deshaun Jackson has over 100 yards. It's the second game of his career. He's done it in the first two. There's only one other person in NFL history to do that. Ironically, an eagle, Don Looney, who did it 68 years ago. Oh, man. So historic stuff for Deshaun Jackson, even with the yes. uh, near bonehead play that he made earlier tonight. He is shaking up on that play. Yeah, he, took, he took a shot there, Mike. Yep. You were correct. The play gains six. And McNabb throws complete for the first down.
to Greg Lewis and a note here that we mentioned earlier in the game all these great cornerbacks for the Cowboys Adam Jones Anthony Henry Terrence Newman limited to nickel situations with his groin injury Mike Jenkins made a good play Eagles without their top two receivers from last year Reggie Brown and Kevin Curtis and they're having another good game through the air yeah, Andy Reid loves to throw the football he has his critics that think he should run the ball a little bit more but when you see a healthy Donald McNabb the pressure of wide receivers and depth that are on this team man and that offensive line I can't forget those guys Donovan's going to keep swinging it. Inside of nine minutes now. Whoa, Westbrook lost the handle. I don't know if that was confusion there as uh, McNabb had the reverse action coming with Lewis. Cowboy ball. Jay Ratliff comes out of the pile with it. This should be automatic. The quarterback running back exchange. It almost looked like uh, Donovan put a double move on him right there. He's going to put it in and pull it out. You see now there, he kind of pulls it out and then tries to put it back in again. And I'm not sure if they had the reverse on or not because they did have a wide receiver coming around with that to hold the backside of the defense. But boy, that just didn't look right. And again, that will not be a Westbrook fumble. That will be McNabb. Westbrook never had it. First Philadelphia turnover of the night. It looked like Donovan was saying, I had my eye on the wide receiver coming around. Didn't insert the ball properly. See, Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator, dials up. Patrick Creighton in the middle. Barrels his way to the 49. 16. Excellent. It's time here for Dallas. Oh, yeah, excellent job by Romo there, Mike. He got in that pocket, had a little pressure, moved out, and found Creighton down the field. No, just a little eight minutes to go here now. There's got to be a little sense of urgency for the Cowboys. Barber. <laughs> Vicious contact for a one-yard game with Quentin Michael again. Everybody uh, automatically assumes in Dallas, of course, that Dallas is a Super Bowl team. And everybody thinks they have the most talent in the league, and maybe they do. So they have to win this game. You have to open up at home in the division against the Philadelphia Eagles and you have to beat them. Well, how would you be where you have to beat them? If you are it's a super, super if you believe you're a Super Bowl team, this is the game you must win. Well, the Chargers thought they were a Super Bowl team too and they've lost their first two games. Well, then they a long not. season. No, you don't bad. want to put all your eggs in one too. basket this early. The fans think Romo, Miles Austin making the grabs first of the year. <laughs> That's what people paint their faces like that. <laughs> that blue all over his face. That's what they think. You know, Terrell Owens has been kind of invisible here in the second oh. half. You're wondering when he's going to show up and make a play. The Eagles have done a good job of adjusting their defensive coverage. They've gone to more zone. They've kept the plays in front of them. They forced Tony Robo to work the ball now down the field. Not give Romo those explosive shots. Well, since the 72-yard catch for the touchdown, Owens only has one grab. You see it right there. And you'll see Lito Shepard on him, and that's usually who shadows him. Lito's had success against T.O. And he wasn't on him earlier tonight. Third and three, Romo comes the other way. Austin catches first down. 37-yard line, 6.45 to go. Dallas driving for the tire to lead. Romo back to Witten again. This time they hit it. Right in the move. First and goal, Dallas at the five. 33. Once again, Mike, the Cowboys get in that attack area around the 40-yard line. They replicated the play that Romo overthrew a little bit earlier. You'll see the throw by Romo here. This one is beautifully executed. Terrific throw to Jason Witten right over the outstretched hands of Brian Dawkins. Look at the stick to the outside. Get a little separation from Brian Dawkins. Now the throw up the field takes Witten away from Brian Dawkins. Well designed by Jason Garrett and well executed by the Dallas Cowboys, particularly Jason Witten. First and goal, Cowboys for the lead. For T.O. Flat on Asante Samuel. There's no foul 
pass to defensive pass interference. The ball was tipped. Okay. Second down. And there's the clarification. The officials immediately signal tip at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you'll see Asante Samuel does a real good job here on Terrell Owens. Asante loves to peek in the backfield, kind of get an idea of what the quarterback's drop will be. Obviously, when you're this close to the goal line, it's going to be a very quick drop, but Asante Samuel likes to look back in the backfield. There, he did a real nice job of defending Terrell Owens. And the officials are continuing this conversation. The way that ball looked on the replay, such a tight spiral, it didn't come out like it was affected by a deflection. Well, let's take another peek at this. Correction, the ball is not tipped. Pass interference, okay. defense number 22. Ball replaced at the one yard line. Automatic, first down. Good call, Mike. Good call. Yeah. Nobody Nobody was was near it. It. Be close Nobody to was tipped. near it. Yeah. And it was pass interference. Yeah. And I take back everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> Deion Anderson, second year fullback out of the University of Connecticut. He's in there from Marion Barber behind that big offensive line. Cowboys for the lead with Barber. Not in. Not in. Second and a couple of blades of fake grass. This is the hardest yard in football. You'll see the Eagles do a really good job at the point of attack, maintaining their equilibrium at the line of scrimmage. And you'll see Barber does not get in the end zone. You know, it's pretty darn close. The question is, you're so close, do you want to use a challenge here or not? Second and goal. Barber. Now he's in. And Dallas retakes the lead. You talked before, earlier in the game, when Tony Romo let the ball loose in the end zone. We talked about the bad Monday night games he's had, and we talked about the gap that he made. Since that point, he has rallied this team very, very well, and he's now taken them to what is the leading score, probably, <laughs> but not the last one. You're probably not right. the last one. This has been something tonight, hasn't Wow. It? Look, I've said that word a couple times tonight. Wow. Seven this times. is the biggest wow game you're going to yeah. have. Oh, no question. Come on. No question. Quentin Dempsey had a good kick return the last time. This one comes to the left side. They've been kicking to the right, and it's covered better by Dallas. The 21, Kevin Burnett the tackle. All right, so now Philadelphia needs a touchdown after the McNabb turnover a moment ago with Brian Westbrook. It's a Philadelphia team that has come into this stadium and had some big wins before Jeffrey Lurie, the chairman and CEO of the Philadelphia Eagles, since uh, he has taken over this team. They've been one of the top six records in the NFL. His belief in uh, Andy Reid, hey, you survive a decade as a coach in Philadelphia. It's a wow statement. His belief in Andy Reid, Andy's belief in Donovan McNair forms the backbone of the Philadelphia Eagles over the last 10 years. And win or lose here tonight, you see this team is not a last place team oh, last no. year. It's a good team. Ware snuck inside, he pulls out. McNabb's throw is incomplete. Intended for Jason Avant with no flag. On that subject about what the Eagles are right now, this is a game that ennobles both teams. Somebody's going to walk out here having lost the game. But both of these teams are going to be able to say, hey, how many teams are better than us? Look around the league, Jaws. How many teams that you say right now are better than either the Eagles or the Cowboys? From an offensive perspective, it would be hard to argue anybody. But there certainly would be concern, some concern about the defense play tonight. But hey, it's been a fun one to watch. And I love all Let them get out of division and see how their all defense right. is. Second and ten. 
Trying to set up a screen for Westbrook. Great job by McNabb to hang in there, but a better job by the Cowboys, although it's Kevin Burnett pulling him down with a face mask or a hole. Let's see. It'll be a hole on Philly. Want the penalty here? Illegal block in the back. Offense, mm -hmm. number 79. Second and long, Todd Harriman calls the flag. You see uh, Westbrook out on the edge. Here comes Harriman's number 79, and he blocks Kevin Burnett square in the back, pushes him forward. That'll get called every single time. That's times two. You get yeah. the penalty, and you push him right into your guy to tackle him. Right. <laughs> uh, great atmosphere here. Second and long coming up for the Eagles. Gary Jones all over the stadium now. Well, there are a lot of Jerry Jones lookalikes, <laughs> and he hires them to be all over the stadium and sell tickets to the new stadium. Good post catch run by LJ Smith. The tight end will set up third. Thank you, sir. Third and a long eight. Real nice job by McNabb. You don't want to get greedy. Go for all of it. Did a nice job of picking up half the yards. Put yourself in a manageable third down situation. Andy Reid with all those plays in that play calling sheet. Kind of looks like Andy's taking over a little bit of the play calling yeah, over Marty Morningwood right now. But he got the situation manageable rather than third and 18 and 19. He got third and eight. Philadelphia has a full complement of timeouts here. Dallas 60 dudes. McNabb with a pocket off the hands of Westbrook. Incomplete. Fourth down, 323 left. They look over to Reed, but I'm pretty sure they'll punch him here. Three timeouts left. Absolutely. One of the few times this evening Donovan McNabb has been inaccurate with his throws. You'll see Donovan let this one just get a little bit away from him. Over the outstretched hands of Brian Westbrook. Donovan's been very sharp tonight. He knows he missed one there. Well, Dallas can secure the possession. Turn it over to that fourth quarter piece, Marion Barber, and try to close the game out on the ground. Had a good kick, a line drive, but a big bounce. 50 yards, Pac-Man from the 26. Looking for the wall, got a block, but it was in the back, so it'll come back. That'll have Philadelphia's pause, make it a longer field. During return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 54. 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, of the Ryder Cup on Friday from Louisville, LSU Auburn, a top 10 college football game Saturday. The last game at Yankee Stadium on Sunday night. And a week from tonight, we've got Favre and the Jets in San Diego. A great week. I was going to do a lot of reading this week, but I guess no. no. I guess I'll watch no. TV. You'll yes. be watching the Ryder Cup. You know that. I'll be watching it certainly Friday. Okay, so Philadelphia with that full complement of timeouts. Can they keep the Cowboys in check? It starts with Barber. Bouncing off Quentin Michael. What do we say about that fourth quarter runner that Marion Barber is? He to a half dozen. Mike, I don't care how good of a running team you are. This is when you have to run the football. When you're milking a four-point lead with under three minutes to go, you have to sustain offense. That's what that this is when you have to run the football. I don't care if you run for 200 yards a game. When you need two first downs to ice a game, that's when you got to be a running football team. Timeout taken by Philadelphia. They have two remaining. 2.57 to go, trying to use them and use the advantage of the two-minute warning. Jim Johnson trying to find a way to get his defense to come up with a stop. Well, you'll see them load the box right now in this second and four situation. They have to force a Dallas Cowboy punt. You know, my good friend Merrill Hodge and I argue all the time, points come out of the passing game, then you run the football to win the game. That's pretty much how this game has been played. The question is, Will the Philadelphia Eagles be able to get the football back? Well, Mike was explaining that Marion Barber is the best fourth quarter runner in the entire league. 
He's the number one guy. So they're built for this. I mean, I would argue that for years the Philadelphia Eagles were not built for this situation. They did not have a I would pure agree running you. back. Yeah, I would agree Dallas with you. Cowboys built a team with a running back that can handle just what you asked them yeah. to do. And they got a beast in the backfield. They got a big offensive line. You know, they're going to run the football. Second and four, back to them. No game there. Third down timeout, Philadelphia, 2.52 to go. And now you put a lot of chips on this hand, the third down hand that's about to be dealt. One timeout, and of course, the two in the morning left. Just to flush out that point you were making, Tony, with Marion Barber in the fourth quarter of last year, 402 yards, 79 rushes, averaged five yards a carry. So in the fourth yeah. quarter, when you need to control the ball and make first downs. And in a game of big plays and big mistakes as well, <laughs> the last one made by Philadelphia may be the difference. But a defensive stop here would uh, give Philly the ball with enough time. Dallas needs to get to the 31. We got T.O. singled up against Asante Samuel down below. Romo the other way for Barber was wide open, but the pressure of the Eagles wouldn't let Romo set to throw it. And they'll punt. And the big thing is it's an incomplete pass, stopping the clock with 247, preserving that final timeout. That was the ball game. Tony Romo had Marion Barber wide open and missed him. Of course there was pressure. Eagles came with a total blitz. That's the gamble Jim Johnson took. He came with the full all out after the quarterback were going to get in his face and force an Aaron throw, and it worked. The Eagles get the ball back with a chance. Now to Sean Jackson, a great punt returner in college. Only Jackie Robinson had a better Pac-10 punt return average than Jackson. As they catch it to 31. And have to go out of bounds, and a flag, too, will take the Eagles back close to their own 20-yard line. Is that Dempse, the good kick returner, who was guilty of the flag? Number 39, Philadelphia. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 39. 10-yard penalty, first down. So Philadelphia has a timeout and the two-minute warning, 2.36. We've got a bunch of time here. It's no panic. Let's look at the flag. Yeah, you'll see the holding right there. That's uh, pretty obvious there. It's, <laughs> Jersey went from an XL to a triple XL <laughs> on, that, on that hold. Jackie Robinson. That's yeah. over 60 years ago. Yeah, yeah. He was a four-sport letterman in college. Jackie. Okay. okay, Ron. All right, here we go. The Eagles have 78 yards to go in two minutes and 36 seconds. Very similar to what Eli Manning had to do in the Super Bowl a year ago. Can he take his team go down the field? Because a field goal does no good. The Eagles have to score a touchdown. McNabb's first throw is to the sideline, incomplete. Greg Lewis unable to obtain possession before going out of bounds, second down. What I found very interesting on, on that from a defensive perspective, the Dallas Cowboys, they brought Anthony Henry, a corner, on a blitz. They came with pressure in that situation, but it was a safe blitz. They still kept the safety in center field. You'll see it right here. Donald McNabb sets quickly. You see Anthony, Anthony Henry, the bottom of the screen on the left side, coming with the blitz. Greg Lewis did not have control, went out of bounds. Got to catch that. Got to make the catch. Sean Jackson and Jason Avant to the bottom of the screen. McNabb steps up, takes off. Slides. Yard shy. Let's see where they're marking it. I think yard shy, yeah, because it did start to slide. Now we'll see if they get one more play in before the two minute warning. I don't think so. It's a big play. It's third down and one in four down territory. Yeah, they are going to get it in. Running Westbrook at the two minute warning. You have to stop it anyway. And a face mask flag will take the ball to the 48 yard line. Jay Ratliff. Penalty 10 on the Cowboys tonight. Personal foul, grasping face mask, defense number 90. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's accepted penalty number 10 of the Cowboys. They have Stewart, the winner here, will be tied with Washington at 1-1. One one. The loser, I should say. The winner will be 2-0 and in time with the Super Bowl champion Giants. That means the NFC East at the end of the night will be 6-2 and two, and the only two losses were the division games. Giants, Redskins, 
and the loser here. Penalty brought the ball to the 49. McNabb in a crowd will go down. Sack also for Greg Ellis. His second. Nice job by the Dallas Cowboys of compressing the pocket. They stayed in their lane. Kind of that must ru mush rush. They were not going to let Donovan McNabb get outside the pocket. Now second and 14. Buck turn. McNabb has a running lane, but throws instead and completes for Avant's third down. I wonder if five years ago or six years ago, he tucks that and he goes. And he goes 15 to 20 yards. I, I would probably think he would. He had an option yeah. there to probably pick up yeah. 10 to 12 yards, but he saw Jason Avant open down the field, but of course the defense collapsed and they had to try to squeeze into Avant. Right now, you've got to be aggressive. You can't throw the check down. You can't throw the ball out in the flat. You've got to try to work the football down the field. You have third and 13, but more importantly, you only got a minute and 23 seconds to go. We do have two downs to pick this up. Still no time to panic. That's right. Five receivers out there. McNabb, nobody's open. Good coverage downfield. And Libby in trouble. Sack! DeMarcus Ware! Eagles probably should take their last time out here, and they do with a minute ten left. Let the man who's with the back-to-back Pro Bowls, where makes the big play. Let me know when it's time to panic. All right, there wasn't time to panic now. before that play, is it now? De Demarcus Ware was relentless on this play. Knocked down, getting up, chasing McNabb. Right here, Donovan's got to be careful with the football. Just throw it away. Just throw it away. You're out of the pocket. Just throw it across the line of scrimmage and save yourself some yards. Donovan's looking downfield, eyes downfield, trying to make a play. Nothing there. Directing the traffic, trying to direct someone to get open. Here comes DeMarcus Ware, number 94. What an athlete. Look at the eyes barreling down on Donovan. And with one hand, takes him down and wraps him up. You know, you said earlier in the sequence, this would be the time that you needed an Eli Manning situation that the Giants had last year. This is now, he, now he needs this is Velcro on the helmet of one of the guys on the Eagles. Tax by Ware and Ellis make it fourth and 17. Philadelphia out of timeouts needs to get to the Dallas 41 to keep the game alive or else the Cowboys go to 2-0. McNabb, they're going to try to lateral here. Jackson lateraling back here at the sideline to Westbrook out of bounds at the 49. I don't get that. The Cowboys get the game. Dallas will win. Well, it was a design hook and lateral. It just didn't get enough yards. Really? It had the hook. It didn't have enough ladder. <laughs> it needed more rungs on the ladder, Jaws. That was designed? I, I, I it was designed. You'll see it right here. Donovan's going to gonna throw the hook right there. Now here right. comes a lateral. And there's another lateral. But the Cowboys defense did a terrific job of staying disciplined. They didn't attack Jackson. They didn't attack Basket because they knew the third lateral was going to Brian Westbrook. Here's Jerry. After giving up second lateral. 24 points in the second quarter to Philadelphia, and they helped them with the Romo mistake. The Dallas defense stiffened here in the second half, guys. Only seven points allowed to the Eagles. This game had absolutely everything. Had long bombs. It had a guy breaking away for a touchdown and forgetting to take the ball with him. Had a fumble in the end zone. Had people leaping over the line of scrimmage. Had every conceivable thing you could want in a football game. It's the eighth game this week where the team that won trailed in the fourth quarter. That's one shy of the NFL record for one week in the league. Terrell Owens leading the cheers. A little sweet for him because it comes at the expense of his former team. Snap. Now official. Cowboys 2-0. And, oh. and they'll see Philadelphia on the season's final Sunday, December 28th at the lake. Do I get to say it? How about them Cowboys? I wish we had the rematch on Monday night. That'll be, that'll be another barn burner. Yeah. Well, you can't go wrong when you have the NFC. You're right. Just, you just can't. Just an amazing football game. Both quarterback, 
quarterback distinguished himself. Oh, Both wow. distinguished what a game. themselves. What a game. Two touchdowns for T.O. for the Cowboys. Barber's been running in the fourth quarter. Tony Romo, despite the mistake, able to come up with a big plays as the game wrapped up. And here's Susie Colbert with Tony. Tony Romo getting plenty of congratulations. Tony. Tony. Yeah. What's it like to be in a game with that many lead changes? It's unbelievable. Yeah, I kind of hurt our team a little bit there for a little bit, but we got back on track, and it was nice to see the guys, and the team played really well, and just kept fighting, and, you know, this game's funny sometimes. Well, you're referring to early second quarter fumble in the end zone. What are you thinking when that happens? Darn it. <laughs> gotta, gotta pick it up, though. I mean, if you let that stuff affect you, you know, you're only going to be so good as a quarterback. I mean, some players are going to go your way, some aren't. And obviously, that was unfortunate, but the guys battle hard and you know, just try to come back out of the next possession and do something good. What's it like to rally your team back after something like that? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> I mean, it was just, um, that's a good football team we just played, real good. And I kind of hurt our team a little bit there, obviously, in that second quarter. And, you know, the ability to overcome the adversity and come back and win, I think, says a lot about the guys who got in the locker room and the coaches. So, I'm real excited about this year. Congratulations. Thanks, appreciate it. And Susie, the Wisconsin native, returns to the state to see Green Bay.